¡Hola amigos! ¡Bienvenidos a mano a mano con Cristina Luna, Wanda Super Santiago y Brian Crawford! ¡Aquí nuestro experto en etiqueta! ¡Tenemos este especial de Thanksgiving para todos ustedes! ¡Happy Thanksgiving! ¡Feliz Thanksgiving! Ta -ta -la 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 -la. Brian, you have a good sense of rhythm. Absolutely, I got that <laughs> Hey, yes. we have to do etiquette in dancing. We can do salsa, we can do salsa. Ooh, yeah, look, qué ritmo. Yeah. Este chico, Wanda, Muy bien. este chico, ya está. Este chico no es, no, 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 uh, you're Latin. Italian. Italian. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, you have this Latin movement, right? Yeah. Yes. Because the gringos that are not Latin, they can, they, how do they move? Your George, how oh, does he Italian. move? They're Italian, they have that yeah. sultriness too. Your Georgie, how does he move? Uh, he pretty well, and he does the southern gentleman. Sí. Bueno, amigos, estamos mano a mano eh, con Cristina Luna, Wanda Shepard Santiago y Brian Crawford. Bienvenidos a este especial de Thanksgiving. Yeah. Vamos a hacer un especial sobre la historia de Thanksgiving en español, en inglés, Spanglish. Y vamos a tener, eh, saben que nosotros hacemos los vídeos de etiqueta con Brian. Entonces vamos a tener una, vamos, nos va a enseñar cómo utilizar los cubiertos, cómo comportarse en Thanksgiving, ¿verdad? Y bueno, no necesito mis gafas que no tengo que leer. Bueno, me las pongo aquí. Vamos a ver. ¿Puedo wear my glasses here? Yeah, perfecto. Perfecto, no. perfecto, perfecto. Unas pequeñas normas de etiqueta que si quieren las pueden aplicar para el día de acción de gracias. Pero vamos a presentarnos aquí. Estamos en los Poconos al oeste de Nueva York, a 80 millas. Yo soy Cristina Luna de España, Cataluña, Barcelona. Hola. Aquí y tenemos este show interactivo. No vamos a interrumpir el show, que es un premiere. Entonces, al final del show, eh, ustedes hagan las preguntas que tengan y Brian y yo las iremos contestando, ¿verdad? Yo las iré escribiendo y él las irá diciendo porque él es el experto en etiqueta. Bueno, Wanda, preséntate. Hola a todos. Este, feliz acción de gracias. Happy Thanksgiving a todos. Estamos aquí con Brian, que nos van a enseñar la ética correcta para tener nuestras cenas para la acción de gracias. Bienvenidos. Bienvenido. Now, Brian, do you want to introduce you? Un poquito de español. Happy Thanksgiving and welcome. I'm very excited to be here. Can't wait to find out about how everyone celebrates Thanksgiving in their house. And we're going to talk a little bit about, no matter how you celebrate, some place setting and some easy little passing and eating things. How does that sound? Yeah, and our, I told our audience that to send us their questions and yeah. at the end of the show, We'll answer the answer, question, yeah. right? Because we cannot answer while we're eating, right? Mm -hmm. Social media while we're eating? No no no, 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 no. Pero vamos a buscar un poco los orígenes de Thanksgiving, de Black Friday, de donde viene el pavo, right? Uh, do you know anything about the origins of Thanksgiving and how, you know, the people have transformed it in during the years? It's, well, it's, it has a long history, right? So it basically, uh, the story goes that the pilgrims arrived in Plymouth, Massachusetts, and uh, they built a colony, and I've been to that little colony. It's all been built, it's very neat. Um, but they had a, a system set up where uh, the governor of the colony said, and they thrived for several years, but they didn't thrive well. They built some houses and they made some gardens, but the system was really set up to be more socialistic, so you could work the fields, so you worked the fields, and you couldn't, so you didn't, but everybody had to share, and over some time, The, the younger people got a little resentful of this system and said, why am I doing all the work? You know, we're getting all the firewood. It's hard life. It was, it was literally building yeah, something out of nothing, right? So instead of everybody pitching in, they pretended they were still in England where they had all these resources and they started to starve to death because they didn't have the, they have the, the resources and they changed their system and they said, okay, everyone's going to have to pull their weight. We're, we're not in England. Um, and they had a more bountiful year and they celebrated Thanksgiving. Uh, it, it does, it, it is true that the indigenous people did help them out uh, with some food and that, that's that winter that they were starving. So the, the story has grown over all the years. And it wasn't until President uh, Abraham Lincoln decided we'd have a, a true holiday for Thanksgiving. People said, you know, over the years, you know, I celebrate this, I celebrate that. So in, in 1862 or 63, Abraham Lincoln decided to make it an official holiday. And it's been a, a, a revered American holiday ever since. It didn't have a, an official date. Um, it kind of floated, so different people did it on different times, but generally it was around the harvest, right? It was around uh, late November mm. or early December. And it really wasn't until the 20th century that retailers saw that, hey, 
You know, after Thanksgiving, people concentrate on the next holiday, which is Christmas. I have a Christmas. question for you. Yeah. Why so is it celebrated officially on the fourth Thursday of November, the last Thursday of November? It's, it's a really good question. So that's about commerce. So retailers sell, wow, people go shopping for th for Christmas after Thanksgiving. So they lobbied Congress and said, can we have an official date and can it be in November so we have more time for people to go shopping you know, and so, yeah, it's all. so it's all that's all about commerce. Um, so Again, it's, a, a, it's about commerce right so um, people started shopping after the official Thanksgiving was made uh, Black Friday is a commerce term and it has everything to do with commerce and so it got its name officially in print in the late 60s um, because Philadelphia police officers watched swabs of people up and down the streets trying to go Christmas shopping on the day after Thanksgiving and so it got coined in the paper as Black Friday because it was black for the police right, right exactly <laughs> <laughs> and it's been, and it's now now a term that's been used all around the world, not just in the United States, to mean the day after Thanksgiving or the day of the official sh starting shopping season, starting for Christmas. And you know what shocks me, really, guys, that that, that people that even, even the day of Thanksgiving they don't respect that day, like places like Walmart. Hay tiendas que abren la misma noche, the same night, all night of Thanksgiving. How do you think about this change? Uh, we will finally end up eating the turkey in Walmart at this stage, <laughs> celebrating but, while we shop eating the turkey. As, they, uh, as the economy gets harder and harder, um, they keep pushing Christmas further and further. Yes. So at the beginning of this month, I was out in LA and there were not only Christmas music on the radio already, but people were decorating their houses and the stores. I'm like, we didn't even get to Thanksgiving yet. Excuse me. Uh, which is my favorite holiday. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> what is your favorite holiday? What is your favorite holiday in America? ¿Por qué es el día favorito para muchos americanos el día de Thanksgiving? You in English, she can do it lower Spanish because they are here from here. Yo soy una emigrante como ustedes, algunos de ustedes. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday because it's not about anything but good friends, good conversation, good wine, good food, and it's relaxed. You don't have to go anywhere. You gather, you know, I mean, you have to get to your destination, then you gather, you hang out for hours. You do this whole wonderful European sit at the table for hours, right? You play games, it's multi generational. You get to hear stories, you get to tell stories, you get to see people you haven't seen in a long time. Thanksgiving is the best holiday. We should do it every day. Every day, every day. <laughs> so, what is like, what is your favorite Thanksgiving? Do you have any memories? I have lots of memories, yeah, from uh, the funniest from, one. From, uh, funniest one. All right, I'll give you a funny story. But you, you don't tell me you burned a turkey. No, no, didn't burn a turkey. <laughs> but we had friends over, family over, the kids, the nieces and nephews all running around. They were all little at this point. My generation, you know, which was, you know, around 40s at that time, we're all in the kitchen and we're preparing food. You can hear the kids running around in the other room. All of a sudden there's a loud crash. <gasps> and all the kids go, uh-oh. And all the moms in the kitchen go, uh-oh. And I said, it was mine. And they looked at me because I don't have children. Like, what do you mean? And I said, that was my mother. She breaks everything. And sure enough, I turned the corner. <laughs> I turned the corner and there's my mother with her broken glass. And all the kids are like, it wasn't us. I'm like, I know. It's it was mine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Y tú, explícanos por qué se, se gusta el Día de Acción de Gracias. Um, sí, también me gusta la Acción de Gracias porque, como dijo Brian, es un tiempo de, de sentarse con la familia, de, de hablar, de platicar, de tener conversaciones familiares y los recuerdos y dar, tener gratitud por eso y la comunicación familiar es muy importante. Ya, pero tú me dijiste, ¿cómo lo celebran los hispanos? Bueno, dependiendo, los hispanos, dependiendo de dónde vienen, um, en la cultura, por ejemplo, yo soy puertorriqueña, puertorriqueños, este, um, a veces hay circunstancias donde uno está comiendo ligerito. No nos sentamos muchas veces así, pero tenemos sí la, la, la idea de, de la familia, tener la familia junta. Y la comida. Sí, la comida es increíble. A veces hay pavo, a veces hay no. Para los que no les gustan los pavos, como a mí. A mí el tampoco pernil, me gusta. El pernil, el jamón, ese es para mí. O sea que todo eso, el latino, they, they use pernil for Thanksgiving table. table. Los 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 turkey. Yeah. And ham. And ham. And ham. And do you know where the word turkey comes from? I don't. You don't? The word turkey comes from because there was a game fall, like a, like a fall, uh, that was brought from Africa towards, through Turkey to Europe, right? So then it was like, it looked like a turkey. They called it uh, turkey because it came from Turkey. Then the pilgrims went to America and they saw another kind of bird that looked like a, a fall. And you know what they said? They call it turkey because it looked like the one in Europe. So it's a misconception. Oh. 
How's interesting. that? That's fascinating. Now you can ask that yeah. in the Thanksgiving table. How's that? You can ask it. Yeah, and now we're we have about that, about. right? So if you're out of conversation, that's a great thing to start, right? Yes. So and now let's start eating. Let's have some etiquette in because people are asking, okay, we have a lot of things here. What do I use? I'm going to start with a let's start with a soup. So many choices. This. <laughs> so choices. So you know, Thanksgiving is one of these meals oh, where you either sit formally like this or you go up and get a buffet and sometimes you pass food so it's all very different mm -hmm. we set this up a little formally just so we can have some conversation about some easy common things with thanksgiving right yeah so one is your napkin mm. so let's do it whenever you get a, a cloth napkin this is how you put it on your lap ready yeah i have two open it all the way up oh, no. right i just opened it yep open it all the way up Fold the top piece down uh, about an inch. An inch? Yeah, maybe a little bigger, right? Mm -hmm. And you're going to put this side that you folded on the on your knees, and that little flap that you've created is going to face up. Face up? Yeah. Why is that? Mm -hmm. So if you drop something from your plate, you not only does it land in your lap and you're completely covered, but like if you're eating breadcrumbs, they can go in that little pouch that you've created. And when you clean and, your and mouth? If you were to, yeah, and if you, so if you need to clean your mouth, you can do a fold so it stays in there, clean your mouth, or if you need to leave the table, we you can do like it. this, right? Right. How do we clean your mouth? Uh, <laughs> you discreetly. You know, if, if your feel is if something's on your face, you have to clean your mouth. That's what your napkin's for. So okay. it's just a matter of, um, you can, you know, the idea behind etiquette is not to draw attention to yourself unneededly. So you'll do it, if you can do it discreetly, that's the best way to do it. Is it okay now, to ask? If to ask? you have something on your mouth and you can't see yourself? Can you sure, ask somebody, like, hey, you have something in your teeth to yeah. your neighbor? Puedes decirle? Absolutely. You, you really, if you're, if you're in a situation where you're friends and friendly, absolutely you should. You know, you should point that out because again, eh, but uh, what you should do, right, uh, is wait for the uh, conversation to be on the other side of the table and then say, Christina, you've got something in your teeth <gasps> and just be discreet about it so, so you're not okay. pointing it out. And it's, then I don't do like wonderful. this. It's wonderful, right. Or if you're on the other side of the table and you're noticing it, what would be great is that conversation's going on you can get up and come around and say, excuse us for a moment, and just whisper in her ear, and then you can take her in the other room and you can do it that way too. No one knows why you got up. Wow, that's great. Right? Now let's talk about all the weapons that I call it. My Robertito always puts like this, but you cannot do it, it's not like this. You know what's right? interesting? Why? You know why your knife, your knife is, was a weapon, right? So in, in wow. medieval times, people use weapons as wives as weapons, right? So there's a, here's knife etiquette. It's just like a weapon. The reason the blade faces the plate is because it's impolite weapon-wise to let it face you. And it, when people use knives in the Middle Ages, this was a weapon weapon, right? So it faces you at all times. It faces your plate. When you use it and you put it back down, you put it on your plate. When you have a tablecloth, nothing dirty ever touches the tablecloth. So your knives don't touch the table. Your food, your utensils don't go back on the tablecloth. So in between cuts, You'll put it down, it'll face you. How do we so hold it? So it'll never it? face... Always facing you. Yeah, it'll always face the plate. Okay. I mean, we don't... Because some Americans I've seen, they do like this. So, it's... Right, so um, there's different styles of... It's not, no, it's just like, I I'm know, going right, to kill you. Stop it! There's different styles of eating, right? There's continental, and there's European, and there's Russian, and there's American. Americans tend to cut, put their knife down, switch their hand, and eat. It's just, it's called American style because that's just the way we do it in America. If you're in America, it's 100% appropriate. If you go back to Europe, it's not appropriate. So in Spain, they don't do that, right? Uh, no, I don't they, know what they do. They, well, but they, in Spain, they'll cut, right? Uh. And then they'll put this down, And but they never, they never swap the utensils, right? No. Americans want to always cut with their right hand and eat with their right hand, whereas Europeans will cut put their knife down and they'll continue to eat with their left hand. But they I'm left-handed, so it's okay. Uh, don't do like that. Oh, you're left-handed. And that's curious because a lot of etiquette rules are formulated around being right-handed and that's why uh, sometimes things like that you just do naturally and don't notice other people doing because you're left-handed. And now let's, do, let's use the spoon. I mean, what are so this is your for? soup spoon. Which so your, here's how your place sitting works. Your courses start from the outside and work their way in, o sea, de or fuera, from the adentro. top and work their way down. O de arriba abajo. Right? So if we're having a soup course as our first course, which we are, <gasps> we're having there a you soup. go. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Then your soup spoon would be at the top here. Ah, it's the top? Yep. Ah, I right? see. How do you eat your soup? <laughs> no. <laughs> It's best when you eat your soup to put it away from you, okay? okay. And 
only take a quantity that you know that you consume neatly. This is a that nice messy soup, right? So it's easy <laughs> it's easy to get it spilled on you. And what about so, a consomme? So, so well here, so two things, right? You always bring the utensil to you. You never mm -hmm. so you can lean in a little bit, but you want to bring it up. So it's important. Mm. Mm. That you only put enough on Turkey there soup. to be able to resume conversation, especially at Thanksgiving. I like this or like this. You don't want to do this because you're going to get it all over you. And what is if it's a consomme? Consomme especially scoop away from you. So or can you, you drink it with your? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? It's consomme it's liquid. Effects, it's sound effects. <laughs> You know what's great about etiquette is that if you're in a social situation with people you don't know, pull out all of the best manners. If you're with your family and you're comfortable, it's more relaxed, you can do what you want to do. What's nice today is we're just going to talk about little easy things. So for example, your bread, right? Whether you're in company or out company, if you're out with, in a restaurant or you're with your family, people like to take the butter, right? Yeah. Butter their whole bread yeah. and start eating, yeah. right? But that's not proper etiquette. So what here's what we're going to do. So instead of taking the, the butter and putting it on the bread and slathering it all up there and then wanting to eat the whole thing, what you're going to do is you're going to take a small amount of butter, right? And you'll put the butter on your plate. Mm -hmm. And this, and I have a butter knife here so that I can pass the butter to the next person. Ah, I'm going to, qué buena idea. instead of buttering Primero, the whole bread, en el plato y pasa you'll take a small piece, bite-sized piece, you'll butter that piece, and then you'll eat that piece. And that way, you're not up and down with a big piece of bread, and you still have a small piece, and you can continue so to So bread, you always have to cut a piece. You cannot put a whole piece of bread in your mouth. It's, it's not proper etiquette, and it's not something you should do in a mixed company. When you're home with family in front of the TV, do what you want to do. But when you're out in a social setting, that's the proper way to eat bread. I have a quick question, Brian. Sure. Like, you were talking about the knives facing away from you. Is that the same thing with the butter knife? Because I've noticed that they're facing us. Yep, there's, the blade is facing up, us for on purpose. Same thing. Okay. Yep. No, okay. Wow. Blades always face you. Okay. They never face your neighbor. And I want to we're going to pass the pepper. Yeah. So if you're gonna, if someone says, one that says, hey, can you please pass the salt and pepper? Who's ever the closest to it? So if, if, you're, if people at the other end of the table are having conversation, she will say, hey, pass the salt and pepper. She'll ask you, who'll ask me, right? Salt and pepper is, a, is married, so it always gets passed together. Ah. So I hand this to you, even if she only asks for one. Okay. And then you'll use what Good, you want. Good, nice. You know? And what about drinks? Do you have, oh, my napkin just fell. I, 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 you don't do that when your napkin falls? So that what's really nice is if your napkin falls, whether you're at home or not, don't draw attention to it. You, if you're at home, you can simply get up, excuse yourself, and get another napkin really easy. Let it stay on the floor. You, no one needs to know. All you're doing is drawing attention to yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can wait until the conversation's on that side of the table, and if you can reach it discreetly, reach it discreetly. Mm -hmm. You know, home is home. But if you're out in a restaurant, definitely leave it on the floor. Mm -hmm. And then when the server comes around, you'll say, excuse me, when you have an opportunity. You know, and you'll ask for a new one. And, and, something, and that goes for anything, bread, utensil, something falls on the floor, leave it there. But now we have another spoon. What about that? And we have another fork. I'm right. confused. <laughs> <laughs> so this fork will be for dinner. Okay. Okay. The, the knife and fork you'll use for dinner. And this is the right place to put them, not all the other way around. That is correct, yeah. Knives and spoons are always on your right. Your forks and your bread plate are always on your left. Your beverages are always above your knives and forks. I always said bet. Bet, like bread and drinks. If you remember bet, the word bet, you know that bread goes to the left and drinks to the yeah, right. Yeah, that's great. Right? That's perfect. And what is that? Hey. And this is a spoon for later on for coffee. And, and what about this one? And that's your dessert. Dessert. So why does this soup spoon go here instead of go here? Your soup spoon could also go here. This could, this could keep traveling out. We could have three more courses that would require spoons and it could keep traveling out. This up top is always first course and last course. If, okay. there's, if there's only one. First and last course. Right, if there's only one thing up here and you're served, let's say, something that looks like it needs a spoon, then obviously that's not dessert. I mean, that, that's obviously the, then dessert. And, and what if somebody is like getting a little bit drunky, drunky? Do we take their wine glass away? <laughs> <laughs> no, más para ti, que te está subiendo la cabeza. <laughs> so, Chili's mine's speechless. Ay, televidentes. No more, but no más mío, Pati Wanda. No más mío. Yeah, with the way today's laws are with drinking and driving, if someone's getting a little tipsy, yeah, try to discreetly pair them down and pair them down and make sure they don't have a ride home or that they stay over. Yeah, you know, whatever okay. you want to do. Now let's drink. Going into drinks and las bebidas. How do you hold right. the drink? How do you eat it? So if it's. And, a, and if I mean, it's... the lipstick and the food, you don't want it is here, right? 
Right, so if you're if you're wearing lipstick, you'll have blotted that earlier, right? So you don't leave any mark on the glass. So make sure que se limpien el pintalabios o se quiten, ¿no? Los, right, yeah. Se lo limpien antes there de... There are a whole bunch of different types of glasses. This one's a little more of a red glass because it's it's a bigger bowl. Whites you always hold by handle so you don't warm it up. Reds you can hold by the bowl if you want to, but there are a lot of reds that are chilled. A real proper red is can be 50 or 60 degrees, which is really not room temperature, mm -hmm. right? So if it's a more chilled red, you can hold it down here, right? But that's where you hold your glass. The water glass doesn't matter, right? Because it's not a stem. And you have to yeah. wipe your mouth before drinking always, after where you're eating. That's a, a personal, you, there's no rule on that. That's just a personal whatever you'd like to do. Yeah. Okay. But what's nice is that if you were going to pass the bread, right? Mm -hmm. Oh. The nice way to pass something, because Thanksgiving we're going to pass a lot of food around the table traditionally, right? Instead of, you're, whatever's in front of you, you're in charge of starting with. Okay. What if okay. it's in the middle, in the center? It if it's in the middle, it's whoever can reach it. All right, and if the person can't reach it easily, then someone has to stand up. But you're in charge, so one is in charge of bread. So even if you don't want bread, you would pick up the bowl and Because you would either you. offer it to your left or to your right. Two hands, of course. Depending on whom is not either engaged in conversation. So if, if Christine and I are engaged in conversation and she's not facing the you, then start at the other direction. Absolutely. Or more importantly, now we're going for seconds and thirds because it's so good, right? If, if Christine is in the middle of chewing, So she doesn't have to answer you, you would start at the other direction. Okay. O sea que si alguien está yeah. masticando no le hagan una pregunta, que no le puede contestar. O sea, la boca abierta. La boca abierta. Boca abierta. Right. Bueno, pues ya están las pequeñas normas de etiqueta, la historia de Thanksgiving, la historia... Oh, we forgot about Cyber Monday. O sea que tenemos Thanksgiving, el día de acción de gracias, el jueves, ya tiene unas normas de etiqueta. El viernes, Black Friday, de compras, y también por internet, cojan vuelos baratos. Y Monday, it's Cyber Monday, para todas aquellas tiendas de tecnología online. ¿Qué les parece? Perfecto. Bueno, les queremos mucho, espero que hayan disfrutado de este pequeño show, Special Thanksgiving Show, eh, las pequeñas normas de etiqueta de Brian, aquí la vibra maravillosa de One Day, su elegancia, y que tengan un feliz día de acción de gracias, y si no, pues hagan una celebración cualquiera y aquí estas normas de etiqueta se pueden aplicar, y ya sabe la pequeña historia de dónde viene Thanksgiving. ¡Hasta luego amigos! ¡Mua! ¡Adiós! Bye. Bye.